Hey everybody, how are you? Welcome to my channel. This is Bob. Good to see you. Got a uh, video for you today. I want to talk to you about uh, whether or not Jesus could come back today. And the answer is, well, yes, there's nothing preventing or stopping God from coming back at this moment. Nothing has to happen. So, we need to know, know this. A Christian thinks about this a lot. The ones who have been introduced to prophecy and are fascinated by Bible prophecy. And the problem today is, you know, first of all, people don't even read the Bible. But what's kind of neat about the Bible is this thing called prophecy. 25% of the Bible is uh, prophetic when it was written. So then you start getting a little bit of respect for the Bible, particularly when you see um, prophecies being fulfilled. So you need to be introduced to the Bible first. And then something that can really turn you on is something called Bible prophecy. And that includes the big main event well, there's multiple main events, but uh, the the, rec the next main event is the return of Christ, the second coming of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus is a historical figure. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting, but he is, everything kind of centers around him, but we can be, you know, his... Um, friend we can get to know him we can uh, have a relationship with him but right now when we're when we're first born when we until the point that we are born again we are separated from God we're at en enmity toward God we're hostile to God and all our goodness is meaningless the Bible actually says this as far as salvation goes. So you can't make a deal with God. God's the one who made the deal. But the beautiful thing is he he did all the work for us. He went to that cross, a very expensive price to pay. And then he rose from the dead. You know, Easter is coming. We're looking forward to Easter. And... In, when you become a Christian, like, every day is Easter. We call it Resurrection Sunday, Resurrection Day. Um, there's a lot there to study. You can study the Passover and how the blood, the blood, you know, in the blood there's life. Even scientists, in my video yesterday, we were talking a little bit about this. Scientists have discovered that, you know, that's where the life is, is in the blood, your heart. And without remission of, without uh, blood, there is no remission of sin. And God himself poured himself out. So whenever you think you can never satisfy God's requirements, you got to remember it's God's blood that was spilled for you. Okay? And that's a powerful thing to have on your side and that covers all your sin that's why we can say this is amazing grace all our sins are covered past present and future so but we got God's blood that was spilled Jesus is God in the flesh he was God and man and the Bible talks a lot about Jesus you know he's the creator of, of all things um, and he's coming back to rule and reign you can do some Bible study on all the amazing things about Jesus and he defeated death and he turned around and gave gave what's the word um, pardons to everybody who believes 
In order to believe, you have to be born again of the Holy Spirit, who is also God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God is love and God is spirit. We need to worship, the Bible says, God in spirit and truth. And truth is recognizing that you, you know, all your good deeds fall, sh you know, God requires 100% per perfection, 100% of the time we all, nobody. So you, can you see the, the value of having God die for you? And then at the moment you believe, you are reconciled to God. And you're guaranteed salvation, as I mentioned many times before. And you cross over from death to life. And you, you know, when you get to heaven, you have a new body that's like his. And new homes, you know, so live on the streets of gold. You have a, a, a new house, a new room. In my father's house, there are many rooms. John chapter 14. And we'll live on the streets of gold. Glorified bodies, and we can go anywhere we want, whenever we want. But we're going to rule and reign with Christ, and we're going to be a kingdom of priests for at least a thousand years. And we will judge angels the bible says so this is some interesting uh, things ahead of us and yet at the same time the bible says no i have seen no ear has heard nor, there, nor has it entered into the heart of man or the mind of man what god has prepared for us but it's revealed to us by his spirit i mean that's a loaded statement right there so there's to neglect, to neglect such a salvation as this is very unfortunate. You know, the, we have an adversary who's Satan. He's defeated, but he is our adversary, and he accuses us before God, actually. But the blood of the Lamb is against Satan. And, um, you know, this message here today is to tell people about Jesus, also to tell you know, that Jesus is coming back, and he could come back today. April 3rd and I would not be an April Fool's joke um, the Bible actually says you know the fool in his heart s says there is no God you know there's so much out there that's suppressed and kept from you it's uh, and then it's misrepresented it's either kept from you or it's misrepresented and presented as a lie like I was reading uh Ta um, common sense today I went to breakfast with a friend of mine and you know he's very well thought of as a founding father and John Adams says without him we we wouldn't have been able to uh, break free and uh, very great writer and I want to get that um, you know I've actually never read common sense but I was poking through it today but he you know, this book has, is one of those anthologies or compilations of all his works. You see that nowadays. And he, uh, he wrote The Age of Reason, I think it's called. And boy, he's taking shots at Jesus left and right. And he really does an extended um, critique of Christianity, which is a surprise because um, most people don't do that. And he's way, <laughs> I'm reading it, I'm like, wow, he is so way out of it way off, out uh, in left field uh, he's bust off a cliff as I like to say and he's tumbling <laughs> he's tumbling down that cliff I mean it's unfortunate you know I hope he got saved at the end but but you know the people who think they're doing the right thing by denying Christ are, are actually doing the devil's work you know the schools are denying Christ and, um, you know, Antichrist is kind of like what we're saying here as well, but that also means in place of Christ. So there's going to be a figure that's going to, he'll either, he might even call himself uh, the Messiah or Jesus Christ or, or something like that. And he will convince everybody in the world um, that he is, he is the Messiah, he's from God, and he'll have all these supernatural abilities from Satan for a short time. But Jesus, you know, the, what ha is going to happen, the rapture is going to take away all the Christians. So there's going to be a tremendous need for stability and for for uh, somebody to discuss supernatural things. 
and and that's where this guy's gonna uh, be able to gain the attention of everybody in the Bible talks about a power God's see at since nobody will believe well not nobody but a lot of people won't believe in this urgent message that we're we're talking about today that believe in Jesus and you will be saved you know God himself is going to send a powerful delusion to the, the world and uh, and the world's going to be tricked and believe that delusion and you know they're gonna put you're gonna have the mark of the beast on your forehead and on your hand and, and that'll seal your fate and but if you don't take that mark of the beast you're gonna give up your you know you're gonna have to give up your life and all the balls ball ball judgments and uh, seals are gonna be unleashed and two-thirds of the world is gonna die you know I was just reading about Vietnam today and what we did in Vietnam you know what I often hear oh you know it was bad you know it was 30 year war or, or conflict as they call it and that you know really started to get going um, in 1965 or 63 six, right the day after Kennedy was killed Kennedy was uh, putting forth um, memorandums that were pulling us out and while he was in Dallas they were in back in Washington they were changing the memorandum I think it was called 273 uh, remember um, NAMSA 273 I have the book right here it's in my <laughs> it's in my knapsack but then um, and, and I think it was NAMSA 263. Uh, See if I can pull it up real quick. And they were they were changing his. Um, he wanted us out, and they were changing his work, his his um, intent. His and the, and 273 was was oh we we want to remain in in, uh, in Vietnam and we're committed. Uh, to um, combat troops and etc. Cetera, et cetera. It was a total lie. I mean, and that became uh, the truth. Let's see if I can find. It. No, I, I, all right. I, it's probably misspeaking here. But um, Kennedy, I'll find out. And, oh, that's YouTube anyway. <laughs> uh, Memoranda Vietnam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and see, they, they make these words difficult for a reason. N -A -N -S -A -M 263. That was his withdrawal order. You can look this up online. And then 273 was created, I believe it was 273, created right after he died and they, they changed his intent and pretended like he, you know, you're saying withdraw in 263 and they, they ignored that and said, oh, we want to remain. Um, what was that thing called again? My point is, um, nothing. yeah, National Security Action Memorandum, that's what it stands for, N S A M 273 was approved by the new president, Lyndon Johnson, on November 26, 1963. Now, it was written up while Kennedy was heading to... Texas, you know, and Kennedy wanted not knew nothing about it, and it was written up by a guy named uh, Bundy. I remember that name because it's the same num name as Ted Bundy. Let's see if I can come up with the Bundy Kennedy. Yeah, that's him, Mac Bundy. He died in nineteen ninety six. 
He was an expert in foreign and defense, defense policies, security advisor to President JFK and LBJ. And he was president of the Ford Foundation for 13 years. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't make this stuff up. But his name's McGeorge or Mac Bundy. And he changed history, national security. He, I'm sure he's under orders to do it. But what we did in Vietnam as a result is the CIA tricked out everybody from North Vietnamese, North Vietnam, to come down into South Vietnam. And then uh, things weren't, you know, they said, every, you know, the communists are going to destroy, Russia's coming in to destroy North Vietnam. They're going to kill you all, so come on down. And so they're all down there. And, and it was like a killing field down there in, in uh South Vietnam, and out of the book I read today, Kennedy, I'm um, reading it, Kennedy and Oswald by uh, Judy Very Baker and Edward Schwartz, excellent book, and it came out in 2017, and they talked, they said four million died, civilian died, deaths, and all, you know, 58,000 American uh, soldiers. I mean, that is astounding. And that, what did we do that for? And, you know, the other thing is the Vietnamese, Ho, was it Ho Chi Minh? He turned to America for help. Uh, and we turned him down. So that's when he went to Mao. And um, the rest is history. And... You know the French were coming in, and they wanted their their precious resources. Vietnam's got a lot of resources, natural resources. So it's it's. I'm just saying that the history we we've been presented with, we're told all this stuff, and we're supposed to believe it at face value. Same thing with the Bible. We've been told all these lies about the Bible, but. You know, you have to do a little digging for yourself and don't believe these things at face value. And when you do, you find God. That's more, most important. And the God of this age that's creating all this chaos all over the world, all these lies, all these people who have died. You know, and then basically you can make the argument that in the name of evolution, you know, Mao killed... 100 million. Stalin killed 70 million in the Fertile Crescent of Ukraine. Ukraine, you know, Hitler killed, you know, 15 million, whatever. And, um, it's, it's astounding. So, they, we need to get the Bible and acquainted with the Bible see that it's a historical document num number one number two it's it's divine and and it's got good news see we're, we're told it's not historical we're told it's not divine and we tell we're told it's got bad news it's you know that's what we're, that's the education we get and 90 percent of the people take that at face of value and if they go to church it's it's half-hearted and maybe it's full-hearted, but they just, you know, you go with, like, uh, a Catholic church, and, you know, you, you're basically involved in a system of trying to please God. And even the Pope can't guarantee, be guaranteed heaven. Whereas the Bible says everybody who believes is a saint, and we're guaranteed heaven in five different places. You know, Hebrews 7.22. Romans 4, 16, Ephesians 1, 14, 2 Corinthians 1, 22, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 5. So whose report will you believe, you know? So in this Easter season, it's not about what giving up for Lent. You know, Jesus gave up his life for you, and he's just asking you to believe. And then you're right with God. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You have eternal life, present possession. You know, these words are life, John 6. Um, you have eternal life, it says a couple times in John chapter 3. 
So this gospel is telling you one thing, and uh, the Catholic Church is telling you something, the Mormons are telling you something, the JWs are telling you something. Probably some of the Protestant churches are mixing gospel and, and the law, and it's double talk. And uh, it's a lot of condemnation uh, in the Protestant church because the pastors who are so important, instead of leading the congregation to be salt in the world, they're turning their target towards the church because they can't not critique the world and inform the congregation. So we need to be free. You, the sun sets free, will be free indeed. And you have a great eternity to look forward to. Eternity's a long time. Have forever. It's, it's not anything you're doing today, you know, um, in comparison is, is the eternal life is, you just, it, it pales in comparison. So you need to drop everything. Read John chapter 3. Call out to Jesus. Go down the Roman road. It's called the Roman road. It, it has nothing to do with Catholicism, although it is the same city. But the, the book of Romans is a big book in the Bible. You can read it in about an hour. But it talks about the easy salvation plan. It's three simple steps. You know, all of us fall short of the glory of God. Most most of us would agree with that. <laughs> We're all for, you know, nobody's perfect. The wages, since God is perfect, though, the wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. See, Adam sinned, and we all inherited his nation, his his nature. We're all fallen. That's why we're dying. That's the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we're in this pickle. We're in this. We're in a corner. And we're all slipping into eternity every day, like sands through the hourglass. Our lives are, for, are going through too, like by like with sands in the hour, hourglass. And nobody's guaranteed tomorrow, so that's why every day I try to do a video because I realize I'm not guaranteed tomorrow, and I need to teach. Um, you know, it's a good thing for me to um, for an outlet for me. So the things that uh, come to my mind, whether it's through God or, or, through, or through what I, I see in the, in the world. And we're called to expose the world, too. I haven't really done too much of that. I've done a little bit of that. And that's something the youth groups could be doing, you know, to get the kids excited, you know, and, and get into prophecy, get the kids into the prophecy. You know, I don't, it's pretty simple. And, and we, we kind of like, kids need to be turned on to get a lot of energy. They got a lot of energy. Look at Nadia Common H. 14 years old. I always looked up to her. I was only like 10. Well, I just heard an interview. She's like, gee, I had all this energy. <laughs> and I went to that gym every day. And the teacher let me burn my energy by doing my hand, you know, flips. And she became the greatest of all time. So the salvation plan is there. It's easy. God's yoke is easy. His burden is life. Come unto me, all you who are weary. And I will give you rest. Shiloh. Rest in peace. Shiloh. That's a great word. It's in the Bible somewhere. I forget where. Sorry. I think it's Isaiah. Anyway, that's a great word. S-H-I-L-O. And... Hebrews 3 and 4 talks about we can take a Sabbath rest in Christ. Rest, you know, you know, they talk about rest and peace. That is Christ. We're resting in peace. He is, he is peace. We rest in him. Shiloh. Wow, I never thought of that. So, that's the, you know, that's how we just deal with death, though. It's always just a our rip, right, to people. But Christ is rest. In peace, he's peace. I am the Prince of Peace, right? We can rest in him now. You know, we can, he's done it all. We can rest in his finished work on the cross. He said it is finished on the cross. 
All right, so that's what I want to talk about. Everybody who calls on the name of the Lord is saved. That's the final part of Roman Road. So it's all, um, all of sin and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3, Romans 6. You know, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And in Romans 10, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's all you got to do. So do that right now and be saved. These are words that I'm giving out. These words are life. Some of these words I'm giving out. You know, the Bible says these words are life. And today is the to say is salvation. It's an urgency. We need to be urgent in season and out of season. Always give a defense for the for the hope we have. And I try to do that every time I speak. So, you know. Like I said, we've been taught all these lies, like in how Vietnam was presented to us. That was the big war when I was a kid. I was in the middle of the Cold War and the Vietnam War, and who knows, I was going to... My parents never told me, but I, who knows, I was... You know, I know that the draft, they struck that down, but that can always change. And all, you see, all, from World War II, they had this huge buildup, and they didn't know what to do with all of the weapons, so they just brought it over to Indochina and Vietnam and uh, Korea. Went to Korea first, I guess. And then they, they wanted to get a return on their investment. So that's another dirty little secret. That's another elephant in the room. Vietnam's an elephant in the room, right? What really happened down there with the CIA causing all this behind Kennedy's back. They just went in there and did all, you know, wreaking all this havoc. Um, Behind behind the uh, Eisenhower, they ignored Eisenhower too. In '54, they completely ignored him. The um, so the the CIA has become this monster. And Dolls went into Vietnam, and you know he, he set up shop basically, and, and it was good business for everybody who profited. It. And it's a shame that's our heritage. As, uh, and, and, you know, America's going to pay eventually. We are paying. We are since, you know, 62 when we took the Bible out of uh, school, prayer out of school and Bible out of school. You know, uh, statistics across the board have gone completely uh, haywire. You know, I mean, divorce. They had invent statistical categories to catalog all the crimes that were going on, especially with the youth. Youth are so important. You only have, like, so many years to really um, get a um, understanding. And then your life decisions kind of are made for you. And um, But there is tremendous um, ways to enrich your life and to learn about the truths in life, especially nowadays with the internet, it's exciting. Um, so we we have to remember there's a devil out there that's tricking us all, and that's where you're seeing these anti-God um, institutions develop. The whole world's under the sway of the evil one. And that's what's going on. And uh, we're reaping what we sow because of it. And Christ is coming back. And the government's, the Bible says the government's going to be on his shoulder, okay? And he come, comes back in a moment's notice when we're not expecting. So that's the rapture. It's got to be the rapture. So the second coming is two phases. A rapture. And then seven years later, you know he'll be coming back because the whole world will be almost completely destroyed. Two thirds of the world's gonna die. So th this message is important. You know, it's this Easter message and the resurre resurrection. Without the resurrection, we have no Christianity. It's very important. And the Easter message is that, that you know, God defeated death. He rose, and because He rose, I can ri I will rise because I believe in Jesus despite my sin and inabilities. And I stand for a message now to tell others, just believe and be saved. 
That's what the Apostle Paul did. He had such boldness. We need to have boldness. We need to have the sense of urgency. And we, we need not to fear and be courageous. And don't be cowards. So that's it today. Something to think about. We will talk again. Today is Tuesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday. And if you could uh, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. And um, My name's Bob and you've been listening to Elephants of Plenty. So many elephants in the room. I stopped counting. I think I, there's over 300 that I've hit on so far. One way or the other. And that's what this channel is all about. I'm going to sign off. And wish you well for today. Bye-bye.